What's up guys, Intentional back with yet another video, and with phase 5 on the way, I think it's time for another pre-raid best in the slot guide. Now, I haven't been doing them for the simple fact that gear really hasn't changed at all. The biggest thing is Bloodvine, and I really didn't see a point in doing a whole best in the slot guide when it was just 3 items that were added. However, with phase 5, we get a ton of new items, with new items dropping from bosses and dungeons, and with dungeon set 2 gear coming out, we can now summon bosses that have some pretty nice drops. So without any further ado, let's just get started. Starting out with your helm, you'll want to go for Spellweaver's Turban, which now drops from General Dracosath and Upper Blackrock Spire. Now, although it is kind of lacking in stats, it does have 36 spell power and 1% hit, which is pretty nuts when you really compare it to some of our best items, for example, the helm from ZG. Now, moving on to our neck piece, we're going to be going for Diana's Pearl Necklace. Dropping from Cannon Master Wheelie and Strat Living, this neck piece is going to last you a while, and it is the only neck piece we can get with hit and spell power. Moving on to your shoulders, and these ones do require some more work, but honestly it's going to be totally worth it. The best are going to be Abyssal Cloth Amos, and we want the spell damage variant with the 15 spell power. Now this is coming from Baron Chasm, which can be summoned in Selfist. Now there are quite a few steps to actually be able to summon him, and I'll have the directions linked in the description below. A good piece to get while you work on these shoulders would be Burial Shaw dropping from the bosses around Ganling and Skolomance. And although it has no hit, it has decent spell power and a nice amount of intellect as well. Now for your cloak, we have the Shroud of Arcane Mastery coming from Theldrin, a dungeon set to some little boss in Blackrock Depths. Now I know this one's going to be argued for sure because it has spell hit on it and no spell damage, so this could totally be exchanged with other cloaks for more spell power if you want, it's kind of up to your preference. I personally recommend going for 12% hit minimum, but you can totally go up to 16% hit if you feel like you're getting quite a bit of resist. And to go on a little tangent here, I've had a few people mention that they were a bit confused and a bit intimidated with Rolling Moonkin because they see different opinions on gear sets, what trinkets they should use, uh, different calculators, etc etc. When you see these arguments, it's over what is usually getting top parses and trying to push that extra 1%. We have a lot of smart Moonkins who are pushing it to the max and really proving what Moonkins can do. However, this is not the standard. You don't have to follow what they preach and you are not doomed for doing so. You can still do great damage and do decent parses without having to always chase the number one spot on the site. Just make sure that you are not lacking in your situation and you are good. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. Yes, this cloak does have spell hit on it, which is nice depending on if you want slash need hit. But, if you're looking for spell power, then some alternatives would be Spritecaster Cape from Gerstan and BRD, and the Archer Escape from Galford and Strat Living. You'll be looking for the Arcane Damage variant with it, and that's going to be 21 spell damage. Moving on to your chest piece, we have the Bloodvine Vest, which is going to be our best in slot throughout the entire Nate Classic. And although you need to buy the mats or even the item itself, it's totally worth the gold all around, so make sure to save up and get it. And a little note here is that I highly recommend getting tailoring up to get that crit bonus on this set. I mean, you're going to be using Bloodvine for the rest of Classic, so you might as well get that extra 2% crit. An alternative to use before getting Bloodvine would be Robe of Everlasting Night or Chestplate of Tranquility, and these both drop from Dire Maul West. Now for your Bracers, the best is going to be Flame Weave Cubs coming from Lord Insidious and BRD, and we want the 21 Arcane spell damage variant. A good item to use while you're waiting for the cuffs to actually drop with your variant is going to be Subline Wrist Guards coming from Dire Maul North. For your gloves, the best would be Slag High Gauntlets of Arcane Wrath with 30 to 31 Arcane Damage. A good alternative would be Hands of Power, and these both come from Liver Black Rock Spire. For your belt, the one you really want to go for is Banthok Sash, and this is a belt coming from Octor the Breaker in the Arena and BRD. The spell damage and hit is really something that you can't go wrong with, and although it might take a few runs to actually hit, it's totally worth the effort. For your legs, it's simply going to be Blood by Leggings, and once again, this is our best in slot, so try to save up your gold and get this ASAP. A good alternative to use to the Blood by Leggings would be the Sky Shroud Leggings coming from Lower Black Rock Spire. Now for your boots, it's going to be Bloodvine, of course, and once again, these are our best in slot, I can't preach this set enough. Try to save up your gold and get the boots if you can. If you can't get Bloodvine boots, then a good alternative would be the Water Spell boots coming from Dire Maul East. Moving on to your rings, the best is going to be Ruin Band of Wizardry coming from Lord Valhallic and Upper Blackrock Spire. This is a dungeon set 2 summon boss, so it can be tough to get, but totally worth because of that spell hit. Now for your second ring, you want to try and go for Elemental Focus Band. 
This comes from Prince Skaldronox and Silithus. And this is the same situation with our shoulders where you'll need to work to summon these bosses. So once again I'll have a guide link down below on how to actually do that. Now some alternative for these rings if you can't get one or either of them would be made in Circle, a World Drop, or Songstone of Ironforge which is a reward from a questline in BRD. I'll have a quest link down below as well. Now for your trinkets we have Briarwood Reed which comes from Judd Ruin Watch and Upper Black Rock Spire. He is a rare but you can usually find groups that are going specifically to find him so you have a pretty good chance at this trinket. Your second trinket is going to be Eye of the Beast, which is a reward from a quest started by killing Wormthalic in Lower Blackrock Spire, and then killing Dracosath in Upper Blackrock Spire. Now for your weapons, the best is going to be Witchblade coming from Gambling and Skullomance, paired up with Scepter of Internal Focus which drops from Sothos and Jaren, who are Dungeon Set 2 similar bosses at Stratholm. Now two good alternatives to these would be Rod of the Ogre and Magi coming from Dyermal North, or Lord Valhalla's Staff of Command coming from Lord Valhalla, a dungeon set 2 summon boss in Upper Blackrock Spire. Now for your idol, the best would be Idol of Moon which is a world drop, but I'm not entirely sure if this is coming phase 5 or phase 6. So if it isn't out, then the best is going to be Idol of Rejuvenation coming from more Greyhoof, who is a dungeon set 2 summon boss in Lower Blackrock Spire. Now with the set complete, we are going to be looking at 297 spell power unenchanted, if you are enchanted, you're looking at 343 spell power. You're also going to have 11% hit and roughly 8% crit. If you have tailoring to get that blood vibe bonus, then it's going to be 10% crit. And I'm not even counting in the 3% crit from Moonkin form, so you have a potential of 13% here. And overall, this set's pretty nice. I mean, 11% hit before you actually raid? That's kind of ridiculous. I mean, when Classic WoW first came out, we were raiding with, I think, a max 2% hit when we entered Molten Core. So it's really crazy to think about that. It's now possible to get 11% hit before even stepping in Molten Core. And I think a lot of new Moonkins are going to be doing great DPS, and I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of people actually raiding as Moonkins now. And yeah, I hope this helps someone out there, and if you want to see more from me, hit that sub button. And if you like this video, hit that like button. It really does help me as a content creator. And yeah, I hope you guys have a good one, and peace.